So the State Historical Society is exhuming some of its mystical, superstitious, and horror-related items out of storage today for a really interesting Halloween event that is open to the public. Danica and I recently caught up with Simone Munson, who's an archivist at the Historical Society, for a preview. So if you're into horror films, horror books, or even kind of the supernatural, this table encompasses a lot of that, right, Simone? Yeah, so we're um, displaying some materials here from our collections that have to do with uh, spiritualism and the occult, sort of, you know, your relationship with your astrologer and having your fortune told. Um, so there's a lot of different sort of things here. Um, it was sort of an interesting time in the late 19th, early 20th century when spiritualism was really popular. Huh. Um, people sort of saw it as a form of entertainment, similar as how you would, like, go visit a magician, but also people had really strong connections with their mediums and their astrologers and including things like spirit writing, you know, the spirit writing we have. This on is fascinating to me. So this is apparently somebody writing through a spirit, someone else, something else. <laughs> yeah, so actually it's um, Zona Gale, who's a really well-known Wisconsin author. She believed in spiritualism and she wanted to uh, connect with her mother who had passed away. And so she either, it's unclear if the the spirit moved through her or through a medium, but in some way she was able to connect through writing with her mother in the spirit writing. And uh, some of the other visual stuff is more movie, you know, some of the Hollywood things exactly. that we maybe saw. Yeah, we, um, we have a really great uh, collection of early film and theater materials at the Historical Society in the archives and um, some of the great like horror B movies are um, we have the posters and lobby materials for those as well it's very cool so yeah. I know Adam's got a whole nother table over there why yeah. don't we go check that out too so Simone we're talking about death at this table too I, that's I, right I, yeah we'll, show me some of what we've got here yeah so um, mourning and grieving in the 19th century were a lot different than they are today I mean in some ways we're all still sad when someone passes away but how we sort of express that sadness is different um, in the 19th century, people would have had very elaborate funerals in their parlor. There would have been caskets and bodies sort of laid out on display. Um, on um, People would have taken hair clippings and saved those hair clippings. So we have a, a hair journal that includes hair from people of a family who would have passed away. And, you know, women would have dressed differently. Men would have worn armbands on their sleeves. Uh, women would have dressed all in black for a long period of time if it was a close relative. Yeah, so over, I don't want to touch it because I know I'm not allowed to touch anything. <laughs> and you have the gloves on. Yeah. <laughs> but share with me these pictures, which are fascinating, because they've got kind of a spooky allure to them as well. Yeah, so this is one of the earliest forms of commercial photography. It's called daguerreotype photography. Um, and actually, the images are placed on um, metal plates that are shined to a high sheen so that they can reflect the image. So the negative is actually set right on the plate. Um, and, and they do have this sort of ghostly quality. You kind of have to move them to be able to see the entire image. So How much fun has this been to go through all of this stuff? It's it's really fun. Um, you know, it's me and a team of I think three other people that have been working on pulling the tables together for the event on Wednesday, and uh, and we really uh, have had a really great time sort of pulling things together. All right, so Simone, there's a spot over here next to the hair journal. Yes. Which um, is empty right now. It's empty. You're going to join us. We're going to be going into the stacks. That's right. Yeah, we have a couple things that I didn't have time to get out of storage. So you guys are going to we're going to go into the stacks. We're going to see where we store the stuff and we'll bring something out. Sounds good. That is coming up a little bit later on News 3 this morning. Thanks for watching the program. To a museum now here in Madison. Later today, the Wisconsin Historical Society is set to put on display for the public some of its creepiest, ghoulish and most superstitious items. Danica and I recently had a chance to catch up with one of the archivists there, Simone Munson, who took us deep into the bowels of the building to show us a couple of the coolest items that are going to be on display. Well, we are hoping that the breadcrumbs have been dropped. If not, there were little arrows on the floor. We are in the stacks of the Wisconsin Historical Society archives. Simone, you back there? Oh, there she is with the box. I'm coming with the box. Okay, so how, remind us again what you want everybody to get out of this event as you bring this mystery box our way. Yeah, so um, in addition to Halloween, October is Archives Month, and so we really just wanted to take <gasps> the time to show off some of the really cool things in our collection Such that has. have a connection to Halloween. 
Um, and this is a, a death mask, which is something that kind of goes along with those mourning practices we were talking about um, upstairs. Um, and this is a death mask that was made of a very, very wealthy woman. Her name is Nettie Fowler McCormick. Um, and, and we have her family's papers in the collection. Um, and so we also got her death mask. So it's just sort of one of the interesting sort of pieces that we get to take care of here. So Simone, what is a death mask? Yeah. Yeah, so a death mask would have been something that um, was made out of plaster, a form of the person's face after they had passed away, so post-mortem. Um, and it was done by some very wealthy people in the 19th century, and it just sort of goes along with that grieving and mourning process um, that was sort of more elaborate um, uh, in the 19th century. Ooh. So you, you, I, as this is going to be part of the uh, of what you're going to be showing the folks, but you also have some a lot of the Hollywood collection is here as well. Yeah. I know you wanted to show us kind of something that's going to be on display upstairs as well. Yeah, so um, you know we're in our storage area, and you just never really know what you're going to find when you open one of our storage drawers. Um, but this is where and how archivists store materials. So all of our posters are stored flat. So in addition to the horror wow. posters you saw upstairs, we're also going to have things like this. This is a really great poster because if you were in the audience, you were automatically in for a thousand dollars in case you died of fright. I could still so. use insurance like that for some movies. So, I mean, how is it? I know we kind of touched on this, but how is it to have to dig? This seems overwhelming to someone, someone like me, but to dig around and find treasures like this has to be amazing. Yeah, it's it's probably one of the funnest parts of my job. Um, you know, but that's what archivists and librarians do. We sort of make this material available to the public. We make sure that it's organized and that people can find it. So whether you're just coming to research for fun and look at something neat, or you're a historian doing you know serious research, uh, these resources are available to everybody. So people who are going to be coming here uh, later on to see this exhibit what do you hope they take from it um well really we're just hoping to sort of show people what archives can do what archives are all about and also just to have a little fun i love fun, it fun is important fun is important especially when it's spooky fun i know so this is going to be going on from <laughs> from four to seven okay, four to seven tonight uh here at it's going to be in the library portion yep in the library um in the in the on the second floor all right, Simone Munson, thanks so much. This been has been awesome. Fun. Let's get out of here, though. Yeah, we don't want to get too creeped out or lost. No. Thanks for watching News 3 this morning.